just come in on the plane? Yeah. Your name Mike Kovac? Yeah, that's right. What? You're the guy. Hey, what are you doing? Ten o'clock this morning. Could I have some water? You bet your life. I can't understand how he missed killing you with that range. I don't believe he thought he did. You're probably right. You got one here and came out here, flesh wound. The other one glanced off your skull. Thanks. You'll be up in a day or two. Right now you need some rest. Thank you. By the way, I'm Dr. Todd. My name is Kovac. I know that. You're the biggest bang that hit Arco in 20 years. Arco? That's the name of our town. Oh. What'll I tell them? Police want to talk to you. Feel up to them? Sure. Five minutes, that's it. Oh, okay. No smoking in here. Okay, okay. Well, yeah. Mr. Kovac. My name is Angelo. This is John Butler. You heard what the doctor said? Okay, okay. Well, we know who you are, where you come from, what your racket is. Now that much we can skip. What happened to my camera equipment? Stayed on the flight to L.A. The company sending it back. According to the doctor, you got 24 hours anyway before you can scram out of here. Anybody you want to notify? Yeah, uh, C.J. Hanley. Hanley Plastics Corporation, Los Angeles. He's expecting me in there. Okay, yeah, Johnny. The man was a male, Caucasian, six feet, 180 pounds, 35 to 40. Gray hat, gray suit, black shoes. Glasses, probably nearsighted. Okay, Mr. Kovac? Sounds like it. Nothing you'd care to add to that, Mr. Kovac? Like scars, or his walk, or voice, or accent? No, uh -huh. nothing. He was driving a sedan. The color was gray with blue trim, Mr. Kovac. Make unknown, license unknown. A dozen witnesses. Not one of them would try for a license number. Can you beat it? The gun was probably a 38 revolver. All right, Johnny, we skipped that part of it. What's the guy's name, Mr. Kovac? I don't know. I never saw him before in my life. Never? That's what I said. Never. Maybe you'd like to tell us the name of some guy who knows this guy's name? I don't know that either. Why did he try to kill you, Mr. Kovac? I don't know. You don't know who the guy is. You don't know a guy who knows who the guy is, and you don't know why you were plugged? That's right, I don't know. What are you doing here in Arco, Kovac? What happened to the mister, huh? Tell your story, let's not waste a lot of time. I got off that plane. And this uh, male Caucasian came up to me, and he asked me if I was Kovac. I says, yeah. He says, you're the guy, and pulled out a gun, and he shot me. And if you don't believe me, I got the bullet holes to prove it. Oh, you're a stinking liar. Your five minutes are up. I said... I heard you. Two minutes more, miss, please. It's all right, miss. Doctor said no smoking, Angie. Okay, okay. From the top, Kovac. 
Well, I'll tell you. Maybe he just likes to shoot people. Or maybe he was trying to start a revolution. Or maybe he's paying off an election bet. Or maybe I didn't get shot at all and you two guys can go home. You're on your way to L.A. to do what? To see who? Henley. He sent me a plane ticket. And a retainer. Wants me to work on a special assignment for him. What special assignment? I don't know, but it's about some color process in his plastics firm. Now, look. I'm a photographer. People hire me. Do you mind? Who is it, Hanley? I don't know. I never worked for him before, but the job sounded interesting. I'm tired. You weren't so tired a minute ago, and you started with those maybes. You know, I think maybe we're going at Mr. Kovac here all wrong. Who either. asked you? Oh, half by, he doesn't know who shot him. I'll even half by you lying there throwing out a lot of lip at Angie. It's a hot day and you've been shot. But you're gonna have to sell me a lot harder on not knowing why you were shot. I'm not selling you anything or you either. I don't even half buy any part of it. Doctor says enough's enough. Excuse me? Maybe you can arrest me for getting shot. Don't start the maybes again. Come on, Johnny, we'll get out of here. The older one, the one who didn't light a cigar? Yeah, what about him? He gave you a transfusion. You've been getting mad with his blood. Don't talk. Why don't we run away together? Mm-mm. Keep your mouth closed. Why not? You're hanging on by a thread. Read your publicity. Star photographer gunned in broad daylight. Sounds pretty upset about it. I'm pretty upset, too. Where's the doctor? He's out. What can I do for you? Well, you might tell the cook to scramble me some eggs, because, boy, I'm hungry. We haven't got a cook. We haven't even got a kitchen. We're not equipped to take care of honest-to-goodness patients. Just emergency stuff. You want me here alone? Mm-hmm, just like in the song. Look, I can run over to the terminal restaurant and get you something. Only take me a minute. Operator.
better sit down. Why won't you help them? Why don't they help themselves? You know, everybody acts like I'm number one suspect around here. You couldn't ruin this whole town. What? Figure it out for yourself. A man like you, known across the country, comes here and nearly gets killed. Now, there were a dozen witnesses, and yet the police didn't make one arrest. How does that look for Arco? Like, the police department isn't looking too hard for somebody to arrest. It's not a pretty spot for the chief of police. This fella Hanley that you were supposed to work for in L.A. Can you tell me anything more about him? He sent for me. He was supposed to meet me at the airport. And that's all. Well, I checked with the L.A. police. And they say there is nobody by the name of Hanley operating anything resembling a plastics business anywhere around Los Angeles. Anything you'd like to say about that? His check was good. It's a cashier's check that was bought from a bank in Beverly Hills. There's no firm name on it. There's not even a signature except the bank cashiers. Doesn't strike you funny? Why should it? Well, it did strike me funny. It did strike him funny. How come? Chief? I didn't even know your lousy little town was on the map until my plane landed here. They told me it would be a 20-minute layover. Did you check that? Yeah, I checked it. And so did he. Hanley, or whoever he is, or whatever he is, could have put you on a through flight to Los Angeles. The airline people say he spent three days on the telephone just to be sure that you were on that boat ride that stayed here for 20 minutes. A setup? He sent you here to get you killed, boy. There's no mistaking that. Who is he, Kovac? Chief, I would tell you if I knew. I don't like to get shot at. If I had any idea, even the craziest idea, I would tell you. Your luggage got back. You'll stay here the rest of the night. Well, maybe I don't want to. I say you stay here. Am I under arrest? You're Chief? under protective custody. I don't know if this guy is mad or drunk or dopey or what. I do know he's out to kill you. It's my job to keep you alive. You'll be able to travel tomorrow. I ought to be out of town on the first plane. Till then, she can hold your hand. Chief? Huh? Those reporters. Oh, I'm busy. But they know you're here, sir. They want to see you. You'll have to give them a statement, Angie. Okay, okay. They know about him? They know there was another attempt. Okay. Johnny, I'm going to tell them Kovac died ten minutes ago. You boys remember that. That's where we're going to play it. What's the idea? The idea is that I've got exactly 31 men to police seven square miles of town 24 hours a day. It'd take five times that many to do the job the way it should be done. And these men got to eat and they got to sleep. I pulled two men off just to stand guard over you. That's two hands less I've got to find the guys trying to kill you. But you'll be safe as long as he thinks he finished the job tonight. Well, what happens afterwards? I told you. I order you out of town tomorrow. I mean, what happens when you tell the newspapers that I'm dead and they find out later you were lying? What do you care about that? They'll pan fry him. We'll have a new chief by the end of the week. Johnny, you always did talk too much. You never did talk enough, Angie. I got a better story for you to give to him. Mm hmm? Can you hold him out? Why should he? Chief, I got a picture here of the killer. You got what? I took it tonight. And you just remembered it? You haven't believed me. Well, maybe I haven't believed you either. So we're even. The jury is still out on you, Kovac. I got a developing tank over in that luggage. All right, shake a leg. Well, I'll need help. 
You got a police photographer handy? Why bother? I'll take it to the lab. No, you won't. This film doesn't get out of my sight. Okay, okay, get Mac. Give me the lights anyway, will you? You make them? No. If those dilations mean anything, he's coked to the ears, Angie. Sorry, sir. Yeah. Run up some prints and get it on the wire. Somebody's got to know him somewhere. Hey, wait a minute. What about the newspapers? Oh, forget about them. If they print the picture, it'll help you catch the killer instead of having you kicked out of office. It'll make you a big man. Why, are you Call miserable. back. I run this my way. The killer sees that print, although he missed you, and he'll come back and try again. Give it to the newspapers. No. This is my picture. You give it to them, or I will. Okay. But I'm going to be awful glad to be rid of you. I don't understand him. He can't understand you. You're not going to sleep with your pants on, are you? What? Unbuckle, boy. Apology. I'll be right out on the couch if you need me. How'd it go with the papers? Okay. You think you're pretty hot stuff? And they forgot about knocking me out of office for now. Kovac, you made a lot of cracks today I didn't like. But there was one especially. You said this was a lousy little town. Well, it's a good little town. It's a plenty good town. It was bad for a long time when McClure had it, but it's good now. I just thought I'd set you straight on that. I like my town. I don't like anybody saying anything against it, and I don't like anybody trying to get away with anything in it. Who's McClure? Just a guy that we finally kicked out of office a couple of years ago. What office? This office. He was a crook. That doesn't mean the whole town's crooked. Where is he now? Last I heard, in Los Angeles. Doing what? Trying to get into the same kind of graft he was running here. He had it pretty good here, did he? He was a louse. He was a dirty louse. He used the public office and people's trust to run in every dirty kind of vice. Go on, go to sleep. What if he changed his name to Hanley? Huh? Sent me a cashier's check and a plane ticket. Go on. Suppose somebody well-known gets killed in your town by a hired killer in broad daylight in front of a lot of witnesses, and you don't make an arrest. They forget all about the good things you've done, and the only thing they remember is all the bad publicity the town is getting right now. The first thing you know is you're out. And somebody like this McClure is back in. 
Wild idea, huh? Ruin. Johnny, get Los Angeles. Tell them to pick up McClure. Any charge. Just so the cashier in that Beverly Hills bank gets a good look at him. It rang a bell. Hanley must be McClure. He must have hired the killer who shot me. Angie was right in wanting me out of town. Here's your ticket. It's on the city of Arco. New York police will meet you at the airport. Don't get any funny ideas about doubling back. I heard you. I'll subpoena you for the trial. Trial? McClure made a mistake buying that check himself. Because he didn't figure you'd be around to mention a check to anybody. You got him. Six o'clock this morning, the L.A. police put him in a special show-up that Beverly Hills cashier identified him. Because he denies everything. But as soon as we get this fella, we'll have a case. You'll read about it on the plane. Uh, oh, your baggage checks. Got one on the leg. They're taking him to the first aid hospital. Oh, well, maybe. Uh, maybe I can give him some blood or something. Okay. Okay. 